Right, hey guys, it has been, well, forever and a day, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think archaeologists are actually still digging up um, the remnants of our first video fossilised in a <laughs> USB flash drive. Um, we have literally, well, overall this whole period of time that I've wanted to get this video up, uh, I think life's got in the way. Yeah, so we moved house, but well, Matt moved house. Yeah, we've bought a new house as well. Yeah. All that's flowing through. Um, at the same time, um, loads of other things have happened with life in general. I think it's actually worked out for for us both in terms of what we can deliver in this video because like we've experienced different things between mm -hmm. then with the bike overall, like you know the Scrambler itself. Um, I've been able to go on adventures as you've probably seen in my previous Tiger 900 video with Phil. Um, the holy adventure experience day as well um, you know I've learned a lot as well and I've really been able to compare and just think back to our trip and you know to begin with I can just tell you right now we had like the absolute <laughs> best of times it was yeah. just amazing and you know we already have plans for Scotland in the new year um, so that's really exciting but anyway enough of that you've been waiting long enough for this video what I really want to cover off to be honest is you know there's not many videos out there really of people talking about the Scrambler 1200 and what it's like and its capability uh, and comfort for two up riding. So, you know, people buy Scrambler 1200s because yeah, one, they're awesome, they're badass, but two, you know, they are like a sort of this heritage classic style adventure bike. You know, the XE and the XC, they come with mod cons that are definitely up there with adventure bikes and the spec of the XE is amazing. Um, so, you know, I know people that, you know, part ways with their Tigers, you know, their GSs, because they want to get a Scrambler 1200 and they still do all this sort of stuff. So it's a really valid question, you know, about how, how good it is to ride two up. Um, and if anything, it's kind of impractical, like what, what we got up to, you know, I wanted to put two, you know, retro lids to the test, which we both did. Um, again, they're not designed for adventure riding. Uh, and my whole setup on my Scrambler, the aesthetic, the style, and how I wanted to build my bike and create it, you know, into my own sort of machine. Again, it's not really ideal for adventure riding or touring or anything like that. Um, and these are all the things that I want to cover off in this video um, because, you know, what my sort of fears were going in, what sort of things I did um, to, you know, prevent certain things happening on the trip. Um, so that's what I want to really talk about. Um, but we will be talking about uh, the bell helmets and the Merlin jackets we both wore in a separate video uh, because we'd love to just talk about that into more detail without cramming it all in one video um, but to begin with I guess my fear obviously carrying a pillion it's my first time actually ever having a pillion for a proper extended period of time we covered off about you know just short 2,000 2, miles. 2,000 miles, yeah, and I've, I've obviously never been on the bike for that long either, and it was quite daunting to be on there, the, 10 days, wasn't it, or 9 days? Yeah, it was days? about 9, 10 days. Yeah, and I've only ever done, like, maybe, at most, about two hours on the bike completely. Yeah, just going out for just a day somewhere, you know, and to the coast or whatever. Some of the times we were doing about eight hours on the bike, like, non-stop, Yeah, so. we were just riding and riding and riding. <laughs> it was an experience. It was a good experience, but, like, still, yeah, hell yeah. I, I was quite shocked at how how um how much I took to it. Like I, I wasn't really I don't I don't think I moaned too much today. No, not at all. <laughs> I mean if anything, this lady sitting next to me, I think we uploaded this on um your birthday. Yeah. Remember? Yes. Just before we were setting off, it was literally Danny's birthday. And we're hoping for next year in her birthday, you want to get a bike, don't you? Yes. Oh my god, so my 30th. That's get that's a bike. already saying something. But yeah, so for me, comfort was a massive question. You know, I have a stock seat on well, I had a stock seat on the Scrambler, which had been reupholstered by Tom, uh, which is Hurley Custom Seats. He did an amazing job making it exactly how I wanted it with the stitching. Uh, he put a little bit of extra padding in there. Um, but nothing major. It wasn't designed to be a comfortable seat. And again, it's a bench seat. So we had that for the whole period of time. That was a concern of mine. Uh, another concern going in would be the suspension and my setup. Now I have tweaked my settings and I've got them to a nice balance where when I hop on and off the bike as a solo rider or I have friends or you know Danny hopping on the back, it's a nice balance so I don't have to keep getting off and on and then tweaking the settings like I had to do on my T100 before. Um, so I've got a nice balance where I've set up the, um, the compression damping and the rebound damping to my sort of my preference um, and 
combined we're about 160 kilos together so I'm going to put them settings up on the screen now <laughs> um, and these settings are designed this is you um, turning the wheel all the way to the anti-clockwise position and then these are the amount of clicks clockwise so just to let you know what's on the screen now that's how the setup is done um, and I'm happy with that and I found it to actually be a good setup for not only our weight together mm. but all of our luggage you know we had the hepco beco uh the hepco beco the hepco <laughs> becca uh, had the luggage rack on the back and i also had their SIBO pannier system so just to the left i had that which was an absolute game changer having that um pannier to be able to just go on and off with all my electricals in um that was you know my drone like yeah. just like i had and it was it was really good though because obviously um where we were going uh, some places we didn't want to just leave everything on the on the bike so we could just literally just take all of our valuables and then leave everything out there and just take it with us yeah have really it with us the strap and the shoulder strap didn't it so yeah. i could just carry it like a messenger bag which was you know that was brilliant and i've got to say hepco becca amazing company they did a cracking job with uh, sending me that for this trip they not only sent me that but they sent me the luggage rack before um i've had that for a period of time now and the luggage rack was amazing because you know having a pillion on the back when i did my adventure ride in the lake district peaks and all that um before last year um you know i just had all my luggage behind me and i just had it tied down just with a grab rail and stuff and that was that was fine but i have to realize you know when you're going away two up you've got to take into consideration all your luggage and i mean we're, like you say we're away for 10 days yeah. so we needed to carry enough you know so i had a 40 litre dry bag on the back and our tent and that was all set up on the luggage rack to sit behind <laughs> which also enabled you to have a, yeah, a rear rest so if anything. I was like this all the time, just chilling in the back. Yeah, um, right. Funny story though, obviously when we, um, when we set off and um, we put everything on the bike and we, we tied it all down, we thought of a really cool like, way of doing it, etc. And as we were um, riding off, we, <laughs> we didn't realise that the dry bag had opened. Yeah, so this is genuinely like when we first set off. So in fact, this is such an epic fail, if anything, that I'm going to have to include it. If we pulled away around the corner, and you can see in this footage on my 360, literally, it's just flapping, it's just hanging open. So Nothing came out, thankfully. But um, yeah, I'm so glad we... I don't know yeah, how we noticed what it, stupid. but we, we pulled up to the, the side and we were just like, we oh saw yeah, it all no. out, like, <laughs> that <laughs> it's was, actually open. Like it's nuts to think, you know, I feel like oh, I've got everything, you know, I feel like one of those guys who's got all the gear and no idea, but mm -hmm. I do, I promise. Um, but yeah, these things, these things happen, you know, it's the reality of life. I'm glad it. it happened then and not like when we yeah, were... Yeah, <laughs> just footage of everything going ding, 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 ding. People just finding all our belongings on the floor. I was floor. quite paranoid. I kept checking back every so often just to make sure. Yeah, gone. I'm not going to lie, I was as well. <laughs> Coming on to, with the topic of comfort, I mean, that comes into consideration with, you know, um, aerodynamics, you know, the wind protection and everything. Um, which again, with the aesthetics of my bike and how I've got it set up, I don't have a screen. I don't have anything like that. There's no fairing on this style of bike. Um, I don't want any of that. I just want to be able to jump on the bike how I love it and ride it. If anybody knows within the, the Scrambler 1200 Facebook group and the community around that, the Tech Tail Tidy, which they produced, um, when it sort of came off the shelf and people bought it, they realized that the sort of angle of the rear, um, when you put your number plate on, people were actually just destroying and wrecking their tail tidies going off road, um, just because the, the angle of it just wasn't quite correct out of the factory, to be honest, and people were wrecking it, taking it off road. The rear wheel with the suspension and the bounce would just hit it and just destroy it. So I had a little fear of that, but because I knew that going in, uh, I had already had my uh, tech tail tidy in a vice, and I'd bent it, so the angle, and the, that number plate was still further away but I did have the fears of both you know Danny and I being on it and all the gear and stuff the suspension it would be sitting even closer um, to the rear wheel and any point on the trip I just thought oh god at some point you know that rear wheel is just going to catch it uh, and that's something I thought of going in uh, but it never once happened thankfully and I think that's because my suspension settings are still quite firm they're not too soft um, which is kind of what, what I want. Of course we did have um, obviously no trip is without some form of disaster um, didn't you have to do this the suspension part? yeah so the the <laughs> the, the, um, the right hand side rear shock I think it's also a little bit of a common fault you'll you find if you search this in the Facebook group people are pinging it up there but the the shock the bolt that holds the shock in it does make its way out and I think this is just something to do to be honest with um, in the factory 
I think it's an, on a bolt that's had, you know, it's not had Loctite put on it in the factory. It's all I can think of, um, but that did come loose yeah, when we were at the cabin. I, I thought, oh, I'm going to check this. <laughs> uh, I was quite shocked at how far that bolt came out. So. And I'm glad we checked it as well. Oh, like, 100%. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's a massive thing. So anyone out there, since that ever happened though, applied red Loctite, sorted, like I've never had any issues since, but that's something I thought I'd definitely mention. Um, Overall, like the actual comfort of being on the Scrambler 1200, bearing in mind mine is the XC, so mine is more road oriented than off road, but we did take it off the pavement multiple times. Yeah. I think one of the fondest memories is when we were in the Brecon Beacons and we took that wall, almost like a massive wide quarry track. Oh my God. We yeah. took it down into, and it said like this gate will be shut tomorrow or tonight oh God, by six yeah. o'clock, and actually... you were worried. <laughs> and we ended up taking a little tiny track that just leads off this this main road, uh, well I call it a main road, there was you know, no, no traffic, but then we went alongside the trees. Yeah, we? and I got a bit too close to a couple of them. <laughs> it was like, then Jack, you... and then I was like, what? And then Dude, it's too, too, too late, too late, yeah, straight in the face. There you go. Go and wake up, Daddy, wake up! <laughs> um, but, you know, just riding it, um, just literally riding it with, with someone on the back and all of my gear, I never felt a, a single moment on the whole entire trip, like, you know, uncomfortable or out of control, like, oh, I don't like this. Obviously, once you lean too much one way, there's a lot more weight to deal with in terms of when you feel it and then it, you, you can drop it as, as happened. Can you remember when you had that interesting moment where you were really far away just filming me on your phone as I was trying to get the, the bike up onto like a mound in a really nice position for a lovely shot, get some drone footage and doing that, I got back on the bike and to bring it back down, I was wheeling it back down and just the momentum and the weight with all my luggage on my back, just dropped it and twice. I dropped it once I dropped it twice maybe three times actually I think it may have been three times but I think it was it three or twice I can't uh, remember I can't remember but genuinely like I, I did drop it multiple times <laughs> um made the same mistake again straight away um but yeah I think the weight is something to take into consideration look at that Well, there you have it. So right here, this is where we're pitching for the night. This is the beauty of wild camping. Brecon Beacons, baby! Woo! High five. <laughs> Boom. Um, but in terms of riding and leaning into the into the bends, having you on the back, I mean, one of the best examples of being able to really put the bike through its paces. Um, with a pillion on the back would be when we met up with the Cotswold Wrecking Crew. Yeah, yeah, so that, that was that brilliant. Day, that day was unreal because I met up with a bunch of friends. One of them you will may well know, which is Phil, who I did the Tiger 900 video with. Um, but yeah, we've got Phil, we've got Al, we've got Craig, uh, John as well. Um, just a just a bunch of absolute amazing amazing lads that all have triumphs and they created this sort of group and they've got actually a brand called the House of Moto which I fully get behind definitely check out their stuff um, but when we met up with them obviously they're all on their own just having the bikes lovely hot sunny weather it was perfect oh it was lovely and really nice we just went on a massive trip all the way through the Brecon Beacons we basically met them sort of like in the Cotswolds we met them at um, Oily Rag actually um, in Gloucestershire and then we took a ride over to um, Brecon Beacons, did a did a day sort of you know few hours through Brecon Beacons, and then met at Baffle House. But the whole trip itself was basically Danny shared my camera. She was taking loads of pictures, which was amazing. It was so much fun. But the idea was it, what was crazy about it was the fact that we were keeping up with them, going through the Brecon Beacons, through some of the most beautiful scenery ever, and literally just to keep up with them, going down all the bends, you know, leaning in. Scraped my foot at one point. <laughs> yeah, you did on on the pegs. I scraped. I was still like. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, photos. yeah, just hanging on like that, that, and that was just like for me. The like, great thing though is the fact that with all the luggage on the back, I felt a lot safer because one, it held me, and also I could le like kind of like hold it to then take the photos. Yeah, so, and a lot of them she was leaning. You'll yeah, see some so, of the GoPro footage yeah. how you're leaning round. So I had that leaning. additional safety of being able to hold on to that and then take the Because a lot of adventure bikes, you know, they have top boxes, you know, you have a rear rack with a completely firm bit of support behind your back as a pillion. Uh, and obviously on the Scrambler 1200, unless you buy kits by like um, third parties that create top boxes and racks and stuff for the Scrambler, um, really it's just soft luggage that people will put on. So just to let you know, we used soft luggage and you were, 
you know, you had a great time with it. I, yeah. tied it. I tied it down with rock straps, had some spares with me as well, but they worked out to be an absolute treat. I used them last year as well. Um, really rate them in terms of you know their strength and whatnot um, but that was that was soft luggage but yeah that whole that whole day of just blasting with the Cotswold Wrecking Crew was was amazing it was you know really fun. it was so <laughs> fun like the adrenaline was absolutely pumping and I mean it's proper twisties up and, and down the road it's beautiful like I can't get over how breathtaking it all is and like I've been I've been to Wales before I've been down to the Brecon Beacons in a car um, and it's a completely different experience when it's on the back of a bike because like, Matt's having to look at the road. I get to then enjoy the scenery around me and that's like... And on a bike, it's just exposed so more, isn't it? It's You've so got so good. much more exposure to the mm. world around you and I think that's just what makes riding so epic. Um, and, you know, on a whole trip, you know, the different, you know, where we actually went and I just looking back at our first original video and what we did on that, you know, getting the map out and we had no plan of where we really wanted to go, but how the whole trip came together for us was absolutely beautiful. You know, we got to see some wonderful areas of the world. We had to go down to Land's End was breathtaking and the weather was just fantastic for pretty much the whole trip. Apart we just when you're on the motorway and you're blasting it yeah. <laughs> and your legs are just like stone cold and you think it's warm. <laughs> You yeah, like it's not well. actually, yeah, yeah, but I think it's just continuous, like wind mm. chill, isn't it? I think, but I like, do think we did really well, like, because as long as you do a couple of stop offs and just a warm cup of coffee. Yeah, so I think in help. terms of comfort, every sort of couple of hours, we would maybe have like a stop, we'd be stretching. And it rained. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it didn't really help. It started absolutely chucking it down, didn't it? Yeah, there was one point where, yeah, it did that was on the motorway. It was on the motorway. <laughs> so obviously, being on a bike, you get a lot of spray. Mm. Um, and we did have some waterproofs with us, but the time that we were on the motorway and that it had already just fallen out of the sky there was no real time and was there. It was there. so quick as well it wasn't like it was, it was raining for long it would be like maybe 10 minutes and then it would be back to being normal again yeah. it was really odd. Yeah but you are crammed into sort of like one sort of seat one sort of area where you can't shuffle them out as much but I felt really comfortable I didn't feel any sort of fatigue in any part of my body really other than maybe just my neck from or like the like on your back a little bit so sometimes obviously when you're on the sitting upright and even though I had the back to like comfort me with all the, the luggage um, after a while it was like my bum was fine it was just more like my legs and my back it's just being in that position dead still yeah times, and you're yeah. you're getting a lot of wind buffeting with your legs yeah aren't you? yeah because like yeah. your legs your skin and that would be so cold it would be ice cold really um, suspension ground clearance everything it's not ideally on paper as good as the XE but genuinely what we did with it we went off the pavement we found some incredible places um, we set up camp in some beautiful locations there was um like a, a, a flat plane um and there were like these little um kind of outposts i can't remember whereabouts it was but it was yeah. like a place with was all it the down sheep. near dartmoor yeah it was yeah. that old it was that old runway wasn't it oh my it? god it was amazing it was and we, took it, we took it off uh, off the road and we went around didn't we we yeah. kind of like went around the, the chasing <laughs> chasing not chasing the sheep but like she was chasing the sheep, <laughs> was chasing the sheep. look at her <laughs> <laughs> i just really wanted to touch one <laughs> um, but overall, the actual, the actual experience itself, to just look at it from, you know, a perspective of like, you know, we jumped on a machine, this machine was our workhorse, this had to get us from A to B, you know, fuel economy wasn't bad at all, to be honest, given what the bike is, um, and for me, ah, that's another thing I should mention, which actually, is a massive important part. Uh, I did actually have some fears, not of the power not being enough, but I thought, I wonder what the power is going to feel like because this is the most powerful engine I've ever had on a bike. Um, and the 900 um, parallel twin, you know, the Triumph motor, um, that does feel like you just need a bit more oomph when you've got someone on the back. Uh, I've always felt like that. I did wonder what it was gonna be like, but oh man, the, the, the power delivery on this, like when you need it just to overtake, the actual power was, was beautiful. I'd never felt like, oh God, I just need a bit more. And that's taken into consideration, as I say, you know, 160 kilos combined. And that's and even the, with the Cotswolds Wrecking Crew, like cap. Yeah, 15, 15 yeah. kilos of maybe luggage on the back. Even they were um, impressed. They were yeah, like, they were really impressed <laughs> that we managed to keep up. Um, yeah, it's just absolutely rips. And I love, I just love that um, high power motor because it's the one from the Thruxton. You know, the tune in it is absolutely lovely. Um, my, <laughs> My bike for me, like I say, it's I made it because I wanted it to be the build and this personal um, machine for me. Uh, and with that, I love the bike to sound, you know, loud pipes are just everything. I think the Scrambler deserves to be heard. And my pipes 
are loud. You know, the SP engineering slash cuts are loud pipes. They don't have a baffle, but the cat is still in. Um, and I did think to myself, Jesus, with with the same, with that being on the bike and like Danny sitting behind, because they're shorter, like basically the end of the pipe stops. It's sort of like, just say I'm Danny sitting on, like the pipe ends sort of here. So you actually are gonna get a lot more noise um, being on the rear. That was a fear of mine. Not only that, the heat shield, you know, the lightning bolt, um, number board that I, I fabricated through lockdown. Um, I did wonder on the sort of like the heat and stuff, but I think that is a massive bonus. Mm. Um, over the stock silencers, which are really big, chunky, they get really hot as well. I actually think, you know, you had no issues with heat whatsoever really, did you? The only, there was one time, that was when we were stuck in that, like on that roundabout, uh, and all, it was all that really traffic. warm. It was such it a was warm hot, day. Yeah. And like normally, I've never, I've never noticed that it gets hot at all. But it was only just this little that, bit. That, yeah. So we were we stuck were in loads of yeah. traffic, basically, to the point where we couldn't really filter, just because the nature of the road and how it goes up and down. It's near Cornwall, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and yeah, for sure. Um, but overall, for the whole trip, you never really moaned once no, about the heat. No, no, nothing about um, the heat apart from that bit. <laughs> yeah, apart from that. Oh. But I do actually recall now because even I, f I mm. feel it as the rider. You know, I, I feel the heat pumping even out the left side, just from the fins of that parallel twin. You know, the heat, how it dissipates, and the cat as well. It gets warm. Um, but truthfully, I still, I've still got the cat in, and I never felt like, oh god, this is unbearable. I need to get off because of the heat. Uh, with momentum, you get going, and muscle memory. I've always learned to sort of just arch my leg a little bit away from it and not had any problems um, and I would definitely rate the Scrambler as being an epic bike to have and ride two up with and I mean as I say got the 1200 XC perfectly capable um, you enjoyed it I loved it yeah, like, it you... was the best experience and I generally my fears was like oh my god I'm gonna hate it I'm gonna be like tired all the time I'm just gonna be like oh, I just wanna get off the bike but I actually didn't realise like the time that we'd actually been doing like two hours and I was yeah. just like, oh, I thought it was only on here for like an hour or a half an hour or something like That's that. That's a testament to your comfort, really. Because yeah. obviously sometimes you get carried away and you're absorbing all of the scenery mm. and everything around you, but then deep down, if you're actually really uncomfortable, like, you know, you're getting a numb bum and stuff, we do need to pull over, but... At one point, we were, um, I think it was, we were going through like Snowdonia, was it that sort of area? Because we'd just come back from doing the slate mines. Oh yeah, it would have been so And um, I remember just being really tired and we were coming back to our cabin, so I just rested my eyes a little bit and I was just quite comfortably just... I think she actually nodded there. off. There was a couple of times on the... properly like nodded off, but I was She's secure. A liar. <laughs> and I just kind of like went a little bit like, <laughs> just like this, just chilling. There, there are times though where you oh, have actually nodded off on the back of the bike. It might not have been on this trip, but... Yeah, I mean, I, did, I, I mean, she is the only one who can tell us that. I mean, the <laughs> GoPro footage that I've watched back, I haven't just seen the helmet go <laughs> just yet. But we do have hours and hours worth to go through. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think <laughs> just as, rested my eyes just for a little bit. It was quite nice. As someone who you know, I've been riding for about ten years, but I haven't really had a pillion on the back of the bike properly. So again, this whole experience I'm sharing with you is, you know, I, I'm someone, I'm someone quite new to to up riding, especially for an extended period of time. Danny's new to it, jumping on the back. Uh, I mean, her, uh, your dad's got a Harley Davidson and he has a city bar and stuff, so she's used to that from when she was like younger and that. But overall, um, it's a different experience, and I definitely feel having a bench seat because um, when we have the Tiger 900, there's another thing I can sort of compare compare to. When I borrowed the Tiger 900 and I took Danny to work sometimes and commuted um, to You're work. a lot higher. Whereas on the um, the scrambler, the scrambler it's, it's a bench you're, seat. You're it's just flat, flat. At the same, and yeah. you like that, don't I you? I prefer it because you're at my height for the pockets and stuff. Yeah, you just fit um, more comfortably. You don't have yeah. to worry so much about keeping yourself upright because you can literally just you know cuddle and just chill. Um, you do feel a little bit more free. Like when you're that high yeah. and stuff like that, you are a bit more like woo. You know, you've got more of your own space. You know, I thought it was fantastic. I loved it and you know, I just can't wait to just get back out there again in the new year and for us to just see new places. You know, I'd love to be able to take the Scrambler abroad as well. Uh, that's, that's something a must. That, that's, that's definitely a must. a must. And you know, we were talking about Europe and stuff as soon as we got back, do you know what I mean? And we were talking about doing it on the Scrambler. So for me, it just speaks volumes of how happy yeah. and how much of a good time you can still have on it. You don't have to have all these mod cons on these crazy adventure bikes 
even though they're awesome. I Don't get me wrong, you know, Tiger 900 was wicked. Um, and I don't know what the future will bring in terms of what adventures we could I have. I mean, it'd be pretty sick to do it on a tiger. Yeah, um, I, I have to admit, once you do have the tiger, you realise... Um, so I may as well throw that into this video as well, because obviously, with having the tiger after the trip and all that, and doing a little bit of camping with Phil, you do realise having all that luggage and everything, having literally like, you know, heated, gri heated grips, heated seat, that wind protection and everything, mm. you do realise how much more comfortable you are than the Scrambler. It doesn't mean the Scrambler in itself is an uncomfortable bike, it just means, I think genuinely, if you were travelling around the world and I could see both bikes side by side, and it was like, by the way, you can take whatever bike you want, I think out of sort of common sense and practicality, you would just go for the yeah, Tiger. Tiger. Uh, even though I love the Scrambler, for me it looks sicker, it feels better, I love what I've done with it, it's my personal bike, you know what I mean? It's got that little sort of sentimental value with it, but the Tiger is just practical. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you have to like, you know, sacrifice on your enjoyment. Exactly, and I do, I, I really enjoyed being um, pillion on, on the, on the and, and that's why like, I wanted to test it with the the retro lids from Bell. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like a Bell Eliminator and a Bell Bullet, you know, traveling 2,000 miles with them sort of lids. It doesn't make sense to a lot of people, and I totally get it. But that's just why I wanted to sort we of. We looked badass. We yeah, had so we many had compliments, compliments. But we'll share more about yeah. about those lids in a separate video. But I think I've covered off everything I really want to talk about. If you have any questions regarding. The, uh, the Scrambler 1200, you know, any sort of setup stuff that I haven't included in this um, this video, by all means, just ping me a message, drop comments in below, and if you like the video, like it, uh, and subscribe, that'd be wicked, because I'd love to just do more of this in the new year, mm. and share more of our adventures even. Woo! Smashed it. <laughs> I guess part three will probably be coming in 2024, so <laughs> stay tuned. Thanks, guys.